now that we have created the class let us go run this class you know like I have to run this class to create the tables and all those things and I have to use hibernate to create the tables so let us go back to the package and let us create a new class let's call it uh, test employee test employee and let it have the public static void main method so in the test employee class the first thing we have to do is to call hibernate we have to like use something called as the annotation configuration we have to call a class called annotation configuration from hibernate this is something you have to remember annotation we can just put annot and control space annotation configuration you can see this annotation configuration let's give it like a object name config equal to new annotation configuration control space new annotation configuration okay now to this configuration class I have to there is a method called add annotated classes now what this method is if we have classes in our project which are annotated with this entity that is these are all annotated classes the classes in our project which are annotated so we need to add this particular classes how many other classes we have we have to add it so we have one class called employee.java so we are going to add that particular class employee.class remember it is employee.class okay so this that means we are telling hibernate hey we have a class called employee.class we want you to take care so that's config.add annotated class employee.class the next line is config dot configure now what does this config dot configure line do now config dot configure line what it does is if you have this hibernate dot cfg dot xml file this is the line which reads this configuration file it reads this configuration file and it understands hibernate reads this configuration file and understands okay what is the name of the uh, connection driver class and where is the driver located the url and what is the username and password of that particular database and what is the database name and what is the dialect for it and all those things so this particular line of code config.configure reads that particular configuration file hibernate.cfg.xml and understands okay fine I have to this is the database and this is the username and password now suppose like if your file name is hibernate.cfg.xml you don't have to do anything here this is more than enough you can go back and like you can go ahead and code but some people will like tend to explicitly write their configuration file names so we can do that it is not required but then you can always write it so that you can know like which configuration file is it reading hibernate dot cfg dot xml this is not required but then because by default it will take this particular file hibernate.cfg.xml and remember it has to be in the this file is in the source that is you have to paste it in the source folder the hibernate.cfg and log4j.properties should be in the source folder so once you have mentioned it let's save it now okay it has read this file and it, it has configured itself now the next step is this we have something called as now we have to make hibernate like you know uh, create those tables to create the tables we have to call something called as a schema export you have to remember this once again we just put SCHEM control space new schema export and to this schema export you have to pass this config object and then you have to call something called as a create method the create method comes with two boolean statements 
that is boolean script and boolean export now what is this boolean script that is, what is the first boolean statement now the first boolean statement i am going to put it as true that means now whatever sql the hibernate is going to generate now the advantage of hibernate is we don't have to write sql statements hibernate is going to write like create sql statements to write to the database so whatever sql statements hibernate is going to create let it be printed to the log file that's what we are saying like okay let it write to the log file so that we can see what the sql statements are so the first statement is true now export what is this one this is also a boolean i'm going to give it true now this is the statement the second true says that okay whatever the sql statements that you create i want it to be written to the database that is i want you to execute this to the database so that is the second statement now why would anyone like create um, sql statements printed to the log file but put this as false don't execute to the database we will see scenarios later on about that let us not worry about it um, for now this is new schema export pass the config object and then call the create method and pass the two true statements now save it control s and let us now run this particular test employee method now right click click on run java application you can see that the console is printing something and uh, some gibberish is going on now you can see that it has done something create table this is the SQL statement it printed out so it has actually created a table called employee in the database so let us go and verify it we can go to the database development perspective and over here in the hibernate DB we can go to schemas my, by default in Derby it will create our tables in the user schema you can click on user you can click on tables and wow we got our employee table so it took the name of the class as the table name all uppercase and it will take these particular data as columns to check this particular uh, table just right click click on data and click on sample contents you should be able to see the results right here see it has like two columns employee ID and employee name we will see later on how to change the table name and column name and all those things but congratulations we have created a table out of a class